All right, let's finish out this um, cell chapter with a video on solid and fluid transport. When we move substances uh, in and out of the cell, we're talking about this transport. So that's what we mean. Substance going intracellularly to out extracellularly out of the cell or from the extracellular environment, which is out of the cell, to the intracellular environment. We have two types, two main types. We have an active processes or we have active processes and we have passive processes. The definition is do we use ATP or not? An active process uses ATP to move a substance across the cell membrane against a concentration gradient. So that's like we're pushing a bike up the hill and that needs energy, and so that's why uh, it uses ATP. That's the energy. If we go with the concentration gradient, we're going then like we're moving down the hill. We don't need any energy for that. We can use the concentration gradient to direct the movement of a substance. So that's the difference between active and passive. So active processes uses ATP. Passive processes use the concentration gradient to move the molecules across the membrane. Let's see, when we look at that, we have diffusion. That's a passive process. That's a high concentration area of molecules into a lower concentration of area of molecules. So the molecules want to move into that direction. Here we have uh, uh, passive processes over here, and we have facilitated diffusions. That means we have a carrier a protein that is in between in the cell membrane that lets molecules in and out, uh, depending on the concentration gradient. The uh, glucose, for example, is a molecule that moves in such a fashion. And then we got the active transport, and that's where the energy comes in. So the concentration gradient is is opposed; so it's going the opposite way. Uh, a very very clear uh, active process is what we know as the sodium potassium pump. And that is uh, an important way for cells to establish an ion difference between the inside and the outside of the cell. And so we have sodium that is pumped to the outside of the cell, and at the same time potassium is pumped to the inside of the cell. Um, and we need those ions to then help us establish uh, energies like an electricity going through the body. We'll talk about that in detail. So here we have passive processes, passive processes, or the main one simple diffusion. So that's when you put a sugar cube into water and over time the sugar molecules will evenly disperse in the water. Uh, this is a process we can use with oxygen exchange between the red blood cells and the tissues, for example. And we'll talk about that in detail when we get to that chapter. Facilitated diffusion is the same thing, but instead of molecules just moving from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration, here we need a channel or a pore that we get the substance in and out. Uh, I showed you that right up here on this slide in this uh, picture here, and that's a good example for that is for is glucose, for example. Then we have osmosis, and osmosis is an interesting uh, situation. It's not that in easy to understand. It is the diffusion of water between two compartments that are separated by a semi-permeable membrane. What is that? A semi-permeable membrane is one that lets some th substances through while others cannot penetrate. So it's a membrane between two components that here does not let solutes, particles, or dissolved particles, pass through. So in that situation, the water will move instead of the particles to balance out the concentration of solutes in both compartments. Okay, let's look at that in a picture. What we have here, we have a... Um, uh, an, a an area, this is, the be this is the beaker, this here is the semi-permeable membrane. On the left side we have sugar molecules fairly 
concentrated. On the right side, we have fewer sugar molecules, but many more water molecules. Now, this membrane does not let water, not let sugar go through, but it lets water go through. So in osmosis, instead of then the sugar molecules going from the left to the right, which would be expected if there were no membrane, the water molecules will move from right to left to balance the concentration of the sugar out. So what's important here is the, the, the solution wants to be it wants to be balanced with the solutes in it. So, but in this situation, what happens is on the left side, then the water level rises, while the right side, the water level goes down. And so we can use that process of osmosis to pull water around in the body or pull solutes, well, pull water around in the body or have solutes pull water back in. Like, for example, uh, after the blood disperses from the capillaries into the tissues to get the oxygen into the, the tissues, all that watery blood part needs to come back into the blood vessel and there is molecules in the blood vessel that remain there that then will pull that water back in. It's not as efficient but it's pretty good. So that's osmosis. Uh, filtration is much simpler than that, that's just when you make coffee. So you have water and dissolved particles are pushed through a membrane uh, or a pore system which lets some particles through and others not and uh, 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 that will make a filtrate uh, that leaves the solutes behind that we don't want in the <coughs> solution. Uh, that's like making coffee through a filter. Then, then we have active transports. We have a few different names here. We have endocytosis, meaning substances that move into the cell. Endo means inside. Then we have exocytosis, and that's when substances leave the cell. Exo meaning exit. So those are two important words to remember. And when the cell is eating, we call it phagocytosis. So that's a substance that comes in. And when it's bringing in liquid, we call it pinocytosis, and that's uh, cellular drinking. I remember that from Pinot Noir or Pinot Grigio, which is a type of wine. Uh, I'm sure the word comes from the same root. Um, but let's, let's look at the endocytosis uh, process or the exocytosis as it comes to larger molecules. When we want to do that, we want to bring them into the cell. The cell membrane wraps around it and pinches off the material to bring it in. Uh, and then the material of the cell membrane is basically a vesicle that very often, if you bring substances in, will fuse with a lysosome, which is a uh, organelle that degrades material brought in from the outside be, and so then the phagolysosome as we can call the combined vesicle when it's fused will digest the material. See look we have that right here. Uh, this is an endocytosis. So this is an area where molecules that we want to bring in aggregate. Here we have a receptor so they, they are in a specific area where they they match a receptor and then will want to bring it in. And at that area, the cell membrane pinches and it, it, it makes it into, see, it, it brings it in here and it makes it into a vesicle like that. And then once it's inside the cell, then it fuses off with a lysosome and um, the, the material that way will be digested. All right, I think that's good enough. We'll go to tissues next.